Hello everyone, Kamats here. In this video about the Odroid Go, I'm going to explain the process for upgrading the firmware and emulator applications. I will also show you some gameplay at the end of this video. If you haven't watched my previous video on the Odroid Go, you may want to check that out after you finish this video. Everything I will be downloading and using in this video will be listed with the links in the video description. I will be using Windows 10 for the upgrade, but you can also use Linux, and I believe Mac as well. I can make an upgrade tutorial using Linux if a lot of people request it. Let's get started by downloading the ESP32 Flash Utility, which will be used with a micro USB cable to update the Odroid Go to the latest firmware. The first page we need to visit is the Odroid Wiki for the Odroid Go. I have bookmarked all of the pages I will be using in this video, and all of these are linked in the video description. If these links change, I will update the description, so please check there for the latest links. So let's open up a web browser, and I'm going to go to my bookmark for the firmware update. It talks here about if you have any errors, you can try this procedure to actually force it to enter the flashing mode. I didn't have to do this when I upgraded mine the first time and several other times after that. So the first thing we're gonna download is the VCP driver for Windows. Uh, this is to be able to talk to the ESP32 chip inside of your Odroid Go. Uh, there's a couple different drivers here. I'm going to download the Windows 10 Universal driver right here. You can see save file. And that's it. It's saved. And now I'm going to go back to the wiki. And we're going to skip step one here because there's actually a newer version than this. As I said in my previous video, they will be updating the wiki. It's just that the versions that are out right now are pre-releases. So until it actually is a general release, they're not going to update the wiki. So we're going to download and extract this flash tool, though the extraction will happen later in the video. You just want to save it for now. And then let's go to the GitHub page for the Odroid Go firmware. And then go to releases. And then download the Odroid Go firmware bin whatever the date is, .tgz. Save that. And then go to the other GitHub page, which is for Go Play and releases. And you're going to download go-play.fw or whatever the latest releases .fw file is. And save file. And now that we have all the files downloaded, let's get them sorted out. Go to Downloads. Here are our files. We'll just create a new folder on the desktop. Just call it Odroid Go. Open that up. And let's open the driver package first. And click the folder here and just drag it over. And then we'll go back, open the Flash Download Tools. And same thing, just click the folder, drag it over. And then we'll do the Odroid Go firmware bin. And then this one is going to be a little bit different. We're going to select all of the files in here and drag them over. And then the last piece will be the go-play.fw and we'll move that over just to keep it all in one place. So now we have all of our files. I'd like to quickly explain what these files are for. These three files here, bootloader.bin, Odroid Go, firmware.bin, and partitions.bin, we will be flashing to the Odroid Go via USB using the flash download tools. The goplay.fw file will be flashed later using the SD card. All of these files make up the complete flash image that ends up on your Odroid Go flash chip. So all of the software has to fit inside the 16 megabytes worth of flash. That's why you can only run certain things on the Odroid Go due to the limitations of the ESP32 chip. So now we're going to install the driver. I have a 64-bit system. You probably do too, but let me show you how to check that. You're going to want to go to start and go to control panel and go to system. And you're going to see either a 32 or 64-bit under system type. Obviously, I have a 64-bit system, so we'll go ahead and close that out. So we're going to install this driver. Say yes. Hit next. It's going to say ready to use. It might take a second on your computer, but don't worry. It's pretty quick. And that's it. 
Before we do anything else, if you have already been playing games on your Odroid Go, please turn it on right now and load up a different game than the one you played last. This will force it to save the state to the micro SD card. If you don't do this, you will lose your save state from the last game you played on the older firmware versions. This is not a problem in the newer firmware versions since they save states directly to the SD card now. On the older firmware versions, they would save it to the internal flash on the ESP32 chip first, and then when you load a different game, it would go ahead and write that previous game out to the SD card and use the flash for the new game. Uh, that has changed now, so every time you actually push the menu button, it will save directly to the SD card after this upgrade process is complete. So now that you got that done, go ahead and connect your Odroid Go to your computer. So now that your Odroid Go is connected to your computer, go ahead and click the start menu, type device, and it should come up with device manager. And you're gonna to wanna to check under ports. And you can see the Silicon Lab CP210X device at COM3. Uh, that is what you'll need when we open the flash downloading tool over here, which we're going to do now. So ESP32 download tool, this third option is what you want. And then it pulls up this screen. You can minimize this window here. And just kind of scoot that out of the way. So this might look a little bit intimidating, but this is actually fairly easy. You just go step by step, and I'm going to go through each step for you. So we're going to click here and select bootloader.bin and hit open. And then you're going to type 0x1000 into that box and check this box and everything should turn green. Then hit the next button, select partitions.bin and hit open. And then Put in 0x8000 and check this box. And then the third box. So we're going to select Odroid Go firmware.bin and hit open. And then this one will be at 0x1000 and check the checkbox. And these are memory addresses on the flash chip inside the ESP32. Uh, so this just tells it to where to start writing the file. I know on the wiki it shows more files than this, but that's the older firmware. It would flash these components all at once, where this is doing just the firmware loading program, this last file here, and then that loading program will load the rest of the firmware off of the SD card. Now we go down to the SPI flash config here. The crystal frequency needs to be 40M, which should be default. The SPI speed needs to be 40 megahertz, which is actually the same as the frequency up here. The SPI mode needs to be DIO, which is, as you can see, dual read and write mode. And then the flash size is 128 megabit because the flash chip inside of the SP32 is a 16 megabyte flash chip, so 128 megabits. And then do not change bin needs to be checked, so it doesn't do anything just writes the binaries directly like it says. And the last part, and why we open the device manager over here, is so that we can select the proper COM port. And since I only have one COM port on here, it makes it kind of easy. You might be the same. And then the baud rate needs to be 921600 here. So the first thing we're going to do is click erase. And this will take a second. And now it says finish. The screen on your Odroid Go will be blank, but don't panic. It's perfectly normal. It has no software to run, so it's just going to show a blank screen. Now we're going to hit start. And you'll see it go through the process. And it's finished. It's not a lot of software to update, so it's pretty quick. So now the screen's still blank. Still don't panic. Go ahead and disconnect your Odroid from your computer and turn it off and turn it back on again. Okay, so now we're going to turn on the Odroid Go. And you can see it says SD card error. It's perfectly fine since we don't have an SD card inside. 
We're just testing to make sure the software loaded properly. Okay, so we're back on the computer now. I've plugged my SD card into the computer. So we're going to go to File Explorer. Click on this PC. I know it's right there, but let's just do it this way. And we're going to right click on the SD card and go to Format. Now, if you have games already and you've already been playing your Odroid Go on the previous software versions, you don't have to do this step. Just skip the format process and keep listening for the additional folders that you need to create for the new firmware. I'll go ahead and tell you which ones they are right after this. So you're going to want to select File System FAT32, Allocation Unit Size, Default Allocation Unit Size, probably put in a better label here, and then leave Quick Format checked so you're not using up a bunch of extra write cycles for no reason on your SD card. So hit Start. Yes, Format. It'll go through it, and Format Complete. Okay, so you can close that. Now we have a blank SD card. For those of you that have already been playing, obviously yours isn't blank. For those of you that are first starting out, or maybe you're creating a second SD card, who knows? There is a file on the wiki for a skeleton setup to automatically put all the folders in here. But because you're going to have to create extra folders that aren't in that file for the new emulator and the new firmware version, I figured I'd just go through and show you the manual process to create all the folders. So let's go back to the wiki real quick. And we're going to use this fourth link. And again, all of these links are in the video description. Now it talks about these emulator systems. Well, there's actually another one, and we'll get to that in a minute. But first, we're going to skip through their lovely screenshots. And just scroll down to here. So you can see here that there's a ROMs folder. There's also an Odroid folder, and that's what we're going to create. But I'm going to use this for reference. Let's go back to here to your SD card and you're going to do new folder and this will call Odroid and it's all lowercase and that is important these folders need to be all lowercase so then new folder ROMs those are the first folders that we're going to create so now we're going to create the folders under Odroid for those of you that haven't formatted your card you already have these but going to be data and firmware. And then under data, we're going to create the individual folders for the save games. So we'll start with COL, which is the new emulator. For those of you that already have all the folders in here, um, this is the only new one you have to create then NES now we have all of our folders in this directory go ahead and select them all and hit copy and this is only if you haven't already started using your SD card. Go back to the top of your SD card folder structure, go into ROMs, and paste. And that saves a little bit of typing. So now we have all of the emulator folders under ROMs and under data, as you can see here. The next step is to go back up to Odroid and go into your firmware folder. And now we want to open the new folder we created ideally on your desktop so it's easy to find. And you're going to want to take the go-play.fw and copy it over. Now if you have other .fw files such as the one for Doom, you'll want to copy those over now as well. And that's it. The SD card is ready. Go ahead and eject the card from the computer by right clicking on the drive and click eject and it says safe to remove and you can plug it into your Odroid Go and turn it on. So now that you have your SD card in your Odroid Go, turn it on and you should see this screen. 
Except yours probably only has Go Play. I actually loaded the Dune.fw and MicroPython.fw files into my SD card as well. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and install Go Play. So go down to Go Play, hit A, and then hit Start. And this will take a second to verify, and then it will go ahead and erase and write the data out to the ESP32's flash chip. Okay, now that that's completed, we are into the menu for all the emulators. You can see Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Sega Master System, Game Gear, and the new emulator, ColecoVision. That's the one we're going to test out. So let's load Antarctic Adventure. So this is kind of a racing game. Just play it for a second here just to show you. Oop! Oop! Ow! It's a little hard to time it through the phone. Oop! Well, anyway, as you can see, I'm not very good at this game. But it's kind of a neat game. Alright. You can see the light lit, showing that it actually backed up the save game to the SD card. Let's go back to ColecoVision. And we'll go down to the bottom and load up Zaxxon. And you can see I've actually already been playing this. Oh, 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 no. Well, you get the idea. All right. So, as you can see, there's a bunch of different games for ColecoVision that I've loaded. But let me show you actually how to get back to the flashing menu that we looked at at the beginning of this. All you have to do is turn off your Odroid Go, hold down the B button, and turn it on while you're still holding the B button and keep holding it and you can see we're back to the flashing menu again this time I'm gonna select Doom with A and hit start okay as you can see we're in Doom it's gonna go into a little demo mode here and there's no audio because the platform just doesn't support the audio from Doom. Okay, so that's that's a little enough of the demo. Let's go into here. Actually play it a little bit. You can see it's perfectly playable. You know, if, if you actually were... <laughs> I got too close to that. Definitely better at playing this with a mouse. Yep. That guy. Well, as you can see, Doom is working just fine on this platform. So if you like this video, uh, hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and that's all for now.